A viral video of an unpleasant exchange between two mothers in an apartment complex in Cambridge made international news this week. It was posted on Facebook by one of the mothers who accused the other of singling her out, possibly because her young child was biracial. Okay, but was it really newsworthy? The video shows one mother taking the other to task, complaining that her noisy child is interrupting her child's nap. Why are you sitting here with me? I'm sitting here because you're preventing my children from sleeping. The exchange takes place at a Harvard-run apartment complex. The mother shown in the video, Teresa Lund, wants to know which unit they live in, going on to ask this. Are you in one of the affordable units or are you in one of the Harvard units? That prompted Alison La Liberté to post her video on Facebook, calling Lund another permit patty, trying to kick me off my own property, accusing her of discrimination, possibly because my daughter is biracial. The post went viral and was soon picked up by the media. At this hour, still no word from Harvard or from either woman about how they plan to move forward as neighbors. The coverage played up Teresa Lund's Harvard affiliation, noting the irony that she's executive director of Harvard's Humanitarian Initiative Program. Lund's online bio has since been removed from the program's website, and Lund has reportedly apologized to La Liberté. Now, excuse me, while I go tend to my kid, because... You're obviously not. But still, for an interaction between two private citizens that goes no further than the exchange of a few testy words, does that make it newsworthy? I have to say, I caught this on the news this week, and I had a hard time figuring out what it was all about. And then we had this kind of lively debate in our newsroom, Adam, as you know, about whether it was really newsworthy. I mean, there was definitely an undertone there of racial bias. I mean, I, I don't even know what, what the ethnicity of the other woman was, but she claims her child is biracial, which I guess must have been obvious. But w did, it, did it rise to this level, do you think, because of the Harvard hook? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think that's what made it irresistible to so many people was here's a, here's a Harvard liberal, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who, who professes to be concerned about, yeah. uh, about, uh, about marginalized populations around the globe, and here she is giving unnecessary flack to the mother of a biracial kid, and a combination of racism and classism at play. I watched it as soon as yeah. I learned this video yeah. existed, and I thought Teresa Lund came across horribly. I understand the concern about whether, I don't know if Teresa Lund is like this on a daily basis or if this was a terrible moment for her. I wouldn't want my worst moments caught on camera going viral. But on the other hand, as a white guy, it's kind of hard to say. There's this whole subgenre of videos that we've seen. That's what Permit Patty was referenced yeah. to, in which you have <laughs> white people giving inappropriate and unfair scrutiny yeah. to people of color. That's a cultural thing happening right now, and this fits yeah. right in. And that, right, that's why it's a that's story. It's I don't a, think right. if we didn't it's have Permit Patty, it's exactly, you have a long. So now, things that may have happened before and we didn't care about, suddenly they fit into that puzzle, and that's why it's being covered. Uh, I think there's, it's compelling video, and so that's what makes a story, right? You have yeah. something that's compelling. The second <laughs> point, though, I think you have to be careful because when we go out and cover stories as journalists, there's some context that we put into it, and the audience is, I hope, has some faith and trust in us. That that when we cover this story, it's authentic and what we're presenting. We don't, when people put videos out there and they go viral, we really don't know what happened no right before no. that started rolling. The, the way that some of these paparazzis have made money over the years is you agitate someone and then you turn the camera on mm -hmm. and you get captured. I'm not saying it happened in this case, but that's what's, what's yeah. bothersome, I think, I about these viral videos. I agree with all of that, and I'll add another layer. The reason it had such legs, let alone whether it was newsworthy or not, is because outrage is clicky, mm. and people like to <laughs> look at something and decide whether they're better or worse than the person who has been in the video. <laughs> it's true. So it makes people feel good about themselves. I would never do that. Or it makes people relate. That happened to me. Or it's yeah. just, oh, my God, can you imagine that white Harvard liberal yeah. doing something yeah. like this? So yeah. it, it, news media ran with it because people will click and watch. It's clicky. It, it, I like that. it probably became a bigger story than it should have. But once this stuff is out there, we don't really control how the public reacts mm -hmm. to it. And the public obviously was, was appalled and really couldn't get enough of it for all the reasons you've all said. Plus, it's, it's clicky. It's clicky. And as <laughs> we should say La Liberté apparently apologized. Lund to, applied. Lund yeah. to before this actually became a news yeah. story. She was also mm -hmm. placed on leave. Yeah. We don't know. That's interesting. Oh, it's thought, been reported I she was placed, but that. it's actually not clear oh. if she took a leave oh. or uh, was put on leave. Mm -hmm.